Welcome to Module 4, Video 3 from the Safe and Effective Use of AI in Education Online Resources. One area of education where generative AI can make a significant difference is in the way that it can personalise learning. This can be especially useful for learners with special educational needs of all ages. AI tools can help educators provide equal access through a variety of different methods. A text-to-text -text large language model can break down complex tasks into chunks, listing or bullet pointing the task. It can also be prompted to respond with a specific persona. This means that we can ask the generative AI tool to respond in the style of something or someone, or with a specific reading age, or in a different language. Certain chatbots can provide low-pressure environments for practising conversations. The British Dyslexia Association states that it recognises the potential for AI to remove barriers to access to education and employment, enabling greater participation in society. For students and pupils with motor disabilities, AI-powered speech recognition tools help them write essays and complete assignments using just their voice. For learners with specific needs and disabilities, AI-powered technology can help to describe scenes for those who are visually impaired support learners with dyslexia and assist in communication. Um, so I'm using it constantly, um, pretty much in most lessons. Uh, so it could be for adaptations, it could be for tweaking it for children with slightly different needs um, who need it. And also it's um, making my time a lot more efficient. So I'm spending a lot more time with the learners and it makes the admin tasks much, 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 much quicker. In order for me to be, be able to use AI in my lessons, I had to go, I had to uh, research uh, certain websites, make sure that the data is not shared with the website or students' data is not shared. And after I checked all these features and the terms and conditions, I shared it with my IT department and they shared it with um, our trust for approval. So out of the two, three uh, AIs, uh, AI image generator that I uh, proposed, one was successful and uh, I was able to be uh, to use it. They had to write a short story and then they had to uh, first write the setting of the st story. They had to use a lot of imagery and literary devices. Um, after they've written the text, they had to um, um, put it on the AI image generator and then the image would be generated. Um, they had to rewrite specific areas so they would look at the image and recognize what the prompt did not, what the AI image generator did not take from their description and then improve that sentence. Generative AI can also insist in the process of generating personalized learning plans whilst maintaining human oversight and decision making. It can also adapt content to suit different abilities and learning speeds. UNESCO highlights that AI has the potential to foster inclusive education by tailoring learning experiences to individual needs. Some of our learners have used an app that has AI to support with their reading. Some teachers have used AI to create some entry-level questions for morning work. Students, you know, they've reached the age of 16, they still um, can't read but they still have to access the big bad world out there. They still have to read menus. They still have to read things on th items they want to buy. Um, but there are apps that they can use. Um, and actually, they're incredibly excited about using uh, to enable them to read these things literally by holding their phone over something and it will read it out. Uh, they can hold their phone over a barcode and it will tell them what they're holding and it will give them various information about it. Um, but these are things that I've, I've, I've literally seen our pupils just so excited about using these things because it's opening up the world for them. So we think AI is a very, very good thing and uh, we're really excited about embracing all the things that are yet to come. So for example, an automotive teacher we work with, he gives his files to an AI tool and then he's able to summon and speak only to those files. And equally, his students are able to summon and speak to those files that have been curated with clear intention by their course tutor, which means they're not going beyond that. They're staying in a particular area, the learners when they're accessing it. 
and equally the learners are able to get podcast overviews of said materials. And that, from an accessibility and inclusivity viewpoint, is particularly impactful. That automotive teacher is able to generate podcast overviews of his slides, his handouts, and the videos he creates in the workshop. And one learner in particular, who can't always be present in the lessons, because he's a young carer and has a part-time job, is able to listen to those podcast overviews when he is travelling to his part-time job, or perhaps... Um, on the bus home from college. So the idea of adapting and personalising resources is particularly interesting. In Scott's example that we've just seen, the college were able to do this as they had considered the safety of the large language model and had permissions in place for the content that was uploaded. AI tools work best when combined with human support, those teachers, parents and specialists who understand each learner's unique needs. An AI tool can assist, but it can't replace the power of human connection in education.